kids, and welcome to VeggieTales. I'm Bob the Tomato. And I'm Junior Asparagus. And we're here to answer your questions. Yep, that's right. I bet you're wondering where Larry is. He was a little tired after the last show, so we decided to let him sleep in today. But don't worry, he'll be here pretty soon. In the meantime, Junior Asparagus has very graciously agreed to help out. Hi! Now, Junior. Yes, Bob? Today we got a letter from Victor Bartholomew of Sausalito, California. Oh. Hi, Victor! Victor has a problem. He says there's a kid named Lewis in his class who hit him yesterday. Oh, my. Oh, my is right. Now, in church, Victor just learned that God wants us to be nice to people, even when they're not nice to us. But Victor doesn't really feel like doing that. Deep down inside, he wants to hit Lewis back. What should he do? Should he do it his way, or should he do it God's way? Oh, wow. I know how you feel, Victor. Sometimes the stuff I learn in church doesn't sound like very much fun. Sometimes I feel like doing things my own way, too. Do you suppose we have a story about that? Oh, do we? Have I ever told you about the Israelites? Hmm, the Israelites. Oh, yeah, I remember those guys. Weren't they supposed to be God's chosen people? That's what the Bible says. Oh, I bet they always followed God's directions. Oh, ho, ho. you'd think so, wouldn't you? But sometimes God's directions didn't seem to make sense to them. You see, well, maybe I should just show you. Huh? Close your eyes, Junior, and don't open them until I say so. All right. Okay. Well, how did we get here? We're using our imagination. Oh. <laughs> so these must be the Israelites. Yep. <laughs> Why are they out here in the middle of nowhere? Oh, now that is a good question. Have you ever heard of a guy named Moses? Hmm, isn't he the one who parted the Red Sea? Right again. But we're going to go back a little further. The Israelites were living in Egypt, but not because they wanted to. No, the Egyptians had taken them captive and were making them work very hard as their slaves. Oh, dear. It was miserable. But God cared about the Israelites, so he sent Moses to lead them out of Egypt and into their own land, the Promised Land. Promised land? No, 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 no. Oh, the land God promised them was wonderful. You could grow things and there was lots of food. No, this is the desert. So why are they here? Ah, yes, that is the point. When Moses and the Israelites left Egypt, all they had to do was follow God's directions and they'd go right to the promised land. But uh, they didn't always follow God's directions. Sometimes they went their own way instead. What do you mean? Well, for example, Moses led them to the Promised Land right away. But when some of the Israelites took a look around, they saw people there that looked like giants. That scared them so much, they wouldn't go in. They got to the land God promised them, and then they turned around and ran away. Now, God was very disappointed in the Israelites for not following his directions, so he told them that none of them could go into the Promised Land for 40 years. You're kidding me. Nope. That's why they're stuck here in the desert. Wow. By the time 40 years had gone by, Moses had died. I thought this story was about him. No, it's about Joshua. Joshua? Who's he? Well, he was Moses' helper. When Moses died, Joshua became Israel's new leader. Do I know you? I'm the narrator. Oh. The Israelites were very sad about Moses dying because he was a great leader. But at last, it was finally time. It's time? It's time? Did he just say it's time? We didn't have a lot of fun in the desert. We didn't have a lot of fun. Saddle up your cow and go behind us now Because we're going to the promised land For 
years I've eaten nothing but manna. A dish that is filling but bland. But now we're on our way. I'll we'll have a taste of play. Because we're going to the promised land. And in the promised land, it's gonna be so grand. We'll have our fill from the grill as much as we can stand. It'll be so great, oh, we can hardly wait. Cause we're going to the promised land. The dining was Lucy with Moses. But we'll be feasting with Josh in command. I'd like a taco, please. And some panos and cheese. Because we're going to the promised land. And in the promised land, it's gonna be so grand. We'll have our fill from the grill as much as we can stand. It'll be so great, oh, we can hardly wait. Cause we're going to the promised land. And in the promised land, it's gonna be so grand. We'll have our fill from the grill as much as we can stand. It'll be so great. Put waffles on my plate. Cause we're going to the promised land. I hear it's flowing with milk and honey. Sounds sticky. Cause, Cause we're going to the promised land. Yeah, we're going to the promised land. Cause we're going to the promised land! So off they went. After 40 years, the Israelites were finally going to their new home. With a big grin, Joshua led his people into the promised land. Unfortunately, he overlooked one little detail. Jericho. are the children of Israel. Oh, hello, children. Hi. It was nice to meet you. Now go away. Yes. <clears throat> no, you don't understand. God has given us this land for our new home. So, well, you're going to have to leave. Oh, did you hear that, Jean-Claude? The little big hand says we have to leave. I'm a cucumber. <laughs> that is hilarious. <clears throat> Let me put something out to you, Deacon. We have a wall. You do not. If anyone is to be doing the leaving, it will be you. That is right. Now listen to me. Our God said that this land was ours, and that all we had to do was follow his directions. So, I'm afraid, if you don't come out, we're going to have to come in there after you. <laughs> I'd like to see you try. You can never get over our giant wall, Tiny Pickle. Yes, Tiny Pickle. You are not a mighty deer. You are just a baby gherkin. I'm a cucumber. <laughs> oh, ooh, my slushy. Maybe we should fall back and regroup. <laughs> Flee, you cowards! I you may have your gun, but we have our war! <laughs> Things weren't going as smoothly as Joshua had hoped, so the Israelites decided to pull back and talk things over. That's a big wall. This time, I really mean it. We should go back to Egypt. Huh? Don't you remember? Snorkeling in the Nile, three square meals a day, plenty of exercise. Oh, it was paradise. We were in slavery. Nothing is perfect. Listen, kids, that land is rightfully ours. And the only way we're going to get it is by taking up that wall. Right, Jerry? Uh, yeah, that, that's right, Jimmy. So Jerry and I are going to put our heads together and come up with a plan to take up the wall. Yeah. They are so aggressive. Well, Joshua didn't know what to do, and he could see that things were getting a little out of control. Where did we put that chemistry set? Is Egypt north or south? Then he remembered that whenever Moses didn't know what to do, he would go and talk to God. How did he do that? 
Well, Moses found the best way was to go off by himself and just listen. I'll be right back. So Josh went away from the camp to see if he could hear God. After he had gone a ways, he saw a strange man with a sword. Whoa! Josh wondered whether this guy was on his side or on Jericho's side. Are you for us or for our enemies? Neither, but as commander of the army of the Lord, I have now come. Well, Josh realized that this was a messenger from God, so he immediately fell face down on the ground in reverence. I'm sorry, I couldn't make that out. I said, what message does my lord have for his servant? Oh, really? That's what you said? Yes, that's what I said. Oh, all right. I come with directions from the lord. Great. What are they? Ah, yes. <clears throat> the lord says to you, Joshua, see, I have delivered Jericho into your hands. March around the city once with all your men. Do this each day for six days. Have seven priests carry trumpets of ram's horns in front of the ark. On the seventh day, march around the city seven times with the priests blowing the trumpets. When you hear them sound a long blast, have all the people give a loud shout and the walls of the city will collapse and Jericho will be yours. Those were very interesting directions. They sure were. Josh went back to camp and told the plan to the rest of the Israelites. And the wall of the city will collapse and Jericho will be yours. They thought it was interesting too. So, we're supposed to hop around the city for seven days, blow our little horns, yell, and the walls are just gonna fall down. Yep, those are God's directions. Well, I'm sure that would work great if the walls were made out of jello. Ooh, then we could eat them. Last call for Egypt. Who's coming with me? Just a minute. I think you'll find our plan a bit more sophisticated. Blowing horns in the desert isn't gonna do it. What we need is serious firepower. Sherry the Curtain! Behold our creation! The Wallmanator 3000! How are we clapping? I have no idea. This is terrible! It looks like they're gonna ignore God's directions again! Shh! Josh has something to say. Um, I think we're forgetting something. Ahem. The Lord has given this land to us. No need to fuss, he knows what he's doing. We know that he will take care of us if we will follow him. Now everyone, sing together. The Lord has given this land to us. No need to fuss, he knows what he's doing. We know. I think we should try doing it God's way first. Well, God's way still sounded kind of funny, but the Israelites agreed to give it a try. And the next morning, there they were, marching around Jericho. It wasn't long before the people of Jericho noticed the Israelites. What are you doing? 
We're going to knock your wall down. By walking around in circles? Yes. It's not because we're crazy or anything. Our god told us to do it this way. Oh, that's a great idea. You go ahead and keep walking. Keep walking. But you won't knock down our wall. Keep walking. But she isn't gonna fall. It's plain to see. Your brains are very small to think walking. We'll be knocking down our wall. You silly little pickle. You silly little peas. You think that walking around will bring this city to its knees? The awesome powers of this wall we've clearly demonstrated. Ah! But out here in the hot, hot sun, perhaps you're dehydrated? Ah, pity them, Philip. Ah, may we, Jean Claude, may we? Won't you join me in my irritating little song? It would be an honor. Keep walking, but you will knock down our wall. Keep walking, <laughs> but she isn't gonna fall. It's plain to see your brains are very small. To see walking, we'll be knocking down our wall. Keep walking, <laughs> but you will knock down our wall. <laughs> Keep walking, <laughs> but she isn't gonna fall. It's plain to see your brains are very small. To see walking, we'll be knocking down our walls. It's plain to see. They talked it over. Well, um, that that could have been a lot worse. We made it all the way around, so um, we only have to do this six more days, and that that'll take care of it. Well, what do you think? I've got slushy in my ear. Well, um, time to fire up the wallmanator, Jerry. Um. Do you think that's a good idea? Who wants to see the pyramids? I'm organizing a tour. No, wait. Things were really falling apart this time. Josh needed to do something, and quick. Junior? Wait! Don't you see what you're doing? God gave you directions and you're ignoring them. Don't you remember what happened when you're supposed to go into the promised land, but you got scared and ran away instead? Because you didn't follow God's directions, you had to stay in the desert for 40 years! Well, yeah, but that was... I know God's directions don't always make sense to us, but things work out a lot better when we do them God's way instead of trying to do things our own way. It didn't make sense when God told you to walk right through the Red Sea, but what happened? The water dried up. And it didn't make sense when God told you to live in the desert, even though there's no food in the desert. But what happened? God gave you manna to eat. Don't you see? Sometimes God asks us to do things that don't make sense to us. Like walking around the city to make the walls fall down. Or being nice to someone who hasn't been nice to us. But when we remember that God made us and loves us and always wants what's best for us, we can be sure that his way is the best way. The Lord has given this land to us, nor need to fuss. He knows what he's doing. We know that he will take care of us if we will follow him.
to march around Jericho. Now, God never said it would be easy. No, the people of Jericho hit him with everything they had. Fire! Run! Fire! But the Israelites remembered that they were following God's directions, and they kept on marching. Six days they marched, and nothing could stop them. On the seventh day, just like God had told them, they marched around Jericho seven times while the priests blew their horns. And just like God said, when they finished marching, the priests blew one long blast and then all the people yelled. some things that we put in our story. Remember, we were using our imaginations. Oh. But there really was a guy named Joshua, and the Israelites really did walk around Jericho, and the walls really did fall down. Wow. Yep. If you want to learn more about Joshua, you can read about him in the Bible, in the book called Joshua. Wow. He's even got his own book? That's right. We're over here by QWERTY to talk about what we learned today. And so what we have learned applies to our lives today. And God has a lot to say in his book. I'll be right back. Huh? What? Not so fast, Tomato! Yes, we love that song! You see, we know that God's word is for everyone. And now that 
your song is done, we'll take a look. The Israelites learned that since God loved them and was always looking out for them, that his way was the best way. That's right. And because Joshua obeyed God, he went on to be a great leader too, just like Moses. Let's see if QWERTY has a verse for us. As for God, his way is perfect. 2 Samuel 22, 31a. Well, gee, if God's way is perfect, I guess it makes sense to obey him. I think you're right, Junior. So, Victor, I know being nice to someone who hasn't been nice to you doesn't sound like very much fun, but following God's directions is always the best idea. And maybe Lewis doesn't need a punch in the nose. Maybe Lewis needs a friend. Yeah! Well, we're out of time for today. Remember... God made you special and he loves you very much. Bye! Bye. <sighs> Is it time for the show? Aw, oh, nuts.